Good morning, and thanks for joining us again today. Even in these times that we are separated physically, but yet our common bond that pulls us all together is the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Mother's Day to those moms and to uh, all women and to children. I like to celebrate everyone, uh, whether you are uh, a mom or not, but uh, I hope you enjoy this special day. I'm Pastor Mike Henning, and I am the pastor here at Walkersville United Methodist Church. And every time we come together, we come to worship and to praise our Lord and Savior. So I encourage us to calm ourselves, to put all of those other distractions that are in our minds and just scrambling for attention, to do our best to put them aside and to, to focus on God's goodness. I'd like us to begin our worship with an opening prayer, and this being Mother's Day, I'd like to share a prayer that is dedicated to them. For our mothers who have given us life and love, that we may show them reverence and love, we pray to the Lord. For mothers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope, and their family and friends support and console them, we pray to the Lord. For women, though without children of their own, who like mothers have nurtured and cared for us, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's call to worship is taken from Psalm 51, verses 1 through 5 and 9 through 12. And I invite you to read this along with me. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. 
for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into iniquity, and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Amen. It's time now for our children's message. I brought with me today a, a cactus, and I want to talk a little bit about a cactus. I didn't know some of these things, but did you know that the roots of the cactus uh, spread out really far and wide, and they're just below the surface of the ground, and they will grab up every little bit of water that comes uh, in, the, in the rain, and then they send the roots send that water to the, to the body of the cactus. Uh, so that's a, a great thing. It's a great source that the plant has. Now, on the outside, it looks like a, a rough kind of plant, and you certainly don't want to jab yourself in this because they are prickly and they really hurt. But there's this, this wonderful thing that the cactus does with this water that other plants don't do. And one thing, I guess it has adapted itself to its environment. Most cactuses are in um, the desert, and so they need all the water they can get. So these roots just grab a hold of that water and send it to the base, and it gets used for other times. And other plants may, may die and wilt because uh, of having lack of water, but the, the cactus continues to live and, and thrive. And so the reason I, I'm talking about this is because in some ways, we can kind of be like a cactus. Uh, we need to make sure that we're spreading our spiritual roots out, if you will. And we need to grab a hold. We need to absorb God's word. And where do we find that? Right, it's in the Bible. So either we can read the Bible ourselves, or maybe we need to have someone else read uh, the scriptures to us. But we just need to absorb all of that goodness that, that Jesus has for us in his word and store it in our hearts. And then when there are times where there are difficult times, and there are difficult times, even for you children, but for all of us, there are times in our lives where there are struggles and it's, and it's hard. So we can kind of go to that, that reserve, if you will, in our heart and remember those scripture passages that help us through tough times. And so one way is to, to memorize scriptures or when we go to Sunday school time and, and have those lessons there or however we, we read and learn about Jesus through the Bible. That's where we need to be a, a cactus like uh, in, our, in our Christian faith and just grab up, absorb all of those, those blessings and all of those good words that Jesus has for us. And then we can can use those when we have some difficult times. So thanks for coming and, and sharing this time with me. And let's do our prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me and showing me how to love others. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Now we move into our time of joys and concerns. But first, just as a reminder, don't forget to send in those names of graduates uh, thanks to those who have done so. Apparently, we have a, a pretty good list growing. But if you haven't done so, please send them in by the 24th of this month so they can be shared during the uh, 31st worship service. And there again, they don't have to be members of the church. They can be children, grandchildren, friends, neighbors, whoever. Uh, just make sure you get them in to us. Now, moving into our joys and our concerns, uh, let's continue with the response of, Lord, Hear our prayer. We give thanks for moms and wives and sisters and daughters and for all women and children. Lord, hear our prayer. For a friend, Tom, having heart issues. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family of Mark, who passed away May 5th. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For the beauty of each season, Lord, hear our prayer. For the patience of uh, this time of being phased back in and reopenings, Lord, hear our prayer. For those in the midst of treatments and therapy and long-term health situations, Lord, hear our prayer. For those unemployed and those who are underemployed and those overworked, Lord, hear our prayer. For the homeless and the most vulnerable among us, Lord, hear our prayer. For wisdom for decisions concerning the coronavirus pandemic, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now go into prayer as we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we thank you that you are always with us. We have that assurance that we are never alone, that you are there with us. So, Lord, no matter what the situation may be in our lives, no matter what we may be going through, there may be uh, economic situations in our lives, there may be spiritual concerns, and there may be just a host of things that are, are causing difficult times, and we may even be struggling, but we do have that assurance you are with us. May we remember that. May we give you thanks and praise in even those times. And Lord, for our joys and our celebrations, we thank you. Lord, we ask your, your continued guidance in our lives, and we just ask for wisdom for those who make decisions and uh, things that need to be taken care of, especially concerning this whole coronavirus situation but also just everything in our lives, Lord. We need to bring them to you, and we need to trust in you that you will see us through each situation and each circumstance. Give us that knowledge and that understanding to not be afraid, but to trust in you. We thank you for these things and all things, and we bring them before you in Jesus' precious and holy name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture passages today, the first one is from the Old Testament, of the second Samuel, chapter 11, verses 1 through 5. And if you would like to follow along, I invite you to do so. This is about David and Bathsheba. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Reba. But David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, and the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him, and he slept with her. Now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanness. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David, saying, I am pregnant. And now from the New Testament, the book of Colossians, the third chapter, verses 12 through 15. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has any grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. This is God's holy word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, today we continue with the second part of my series on forgiveness. Last week, we looked at God's divine answer is forgiveness. It's always forgiveness. Today, the emphasis is on relationships and how forgiveness plays a vital role in keeping all relationships healthy and strong. Of course, I'm using scriptures, but I'm also using Adam Hamilton's book, Forgiveness, Finding Peace Through Letting Go. Good, strong, healthy relationships are part determination, part willpower, and a constant willingness to seek out and to grant forgiveness. These relationships simply cannot stand without forgiveness. When I do a wedding uh, ceremony, <clears throat> I ask the bride and the groom to each make a declaration to one another. And I ask a, a series of questions. Will you love, comfort, honor, and keep uh, this one before you in sickness and in health and forsaking all others to be faithful as long as you both shall live? And then I say, if so, answer, I do. And each one uh, in their turn answers, I do. The, the same thing is very similar with the, with the wedding vows. There's the, the better or worse, richer or poorer, sickness and in health, love and to cherish until death parts the couple. And they make that covenant as well. With that being said, I don't know what the commitments were in ancient Near East wedding ceremonies. But nevertheless, as the Old Testament passage points out, it demonstrated that King David committed infidelity in his marriage. He committed adultery. And because of his actions with Bathsheba, he broke the sixth, seventh, ninth, and tenth commandments. You can check that out in Exodus chapter 20 in the Old Testament. In fact, I encourage you to look them up uh, to see what those particular commandments are. Uh, the sixth, seventh, ninth, and tenth. As we found out last week, punishment for adultery was for both people to be stoned to death. Well, this didn't happen with David because he kept his situation all covered up with a, a series of lies and, and deceptions. And partly because of that, David experienced much grief and suffering in his life. But he did repent, and he sought God's forgiveness. 
In fact, today's call to worship, Psalm 51, is David's response when uh, Nathan confronted him about his affair with Bathsheba. Again, just to repeat parts of that, David is praying to the Lord, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. I sinned and did what is evil in your sight, created me a clean heart, a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. That was David's prayer. That was his repentance. That was him seeking God's forgiveness. This could be our prayer too. Not saying that we committed adultery, but just whenever we've done something wrong then, and we seek God's forgiveness, we too could pray that very prayer. Now, our lack of faithfulness in any relationship causes us to wander further and further off the path that God has set before us. King David wandered pretty far off that path with his involvement with Bathsheba. And also, not only that, but having Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, killed to cover up his lies and his misdeeds. But you see, even with such grievous and, and destructive sin as this, in a marriage or in any relationship, forgiveness is possible. Both people need to be working at those things and working through those issues to reconcile their relationship. It certainly isn't an easy process to go through because of the betrayal and the broken covenant that like a husband or a wife made on their wedding day or in any relationship, when that uh, trust has been broken, it takes a while to mend that back together. And sadly, sometimes it doesn't get repaired, uh, but there, it, there is hope. Hamilton says there are four steps to forgiveness, and I won't get into those into detail, but there's uh, the four steps of forgiveness in any relationship are awareness, remorse, confession, and change, along with a lot of times needing some professional help from counselors or support groups, or things like that. But each need to be willing to work through these things. In order for any relationship to be salvaged and repaired and brought back to a wholeness again, there must be much prayer and hard work and forgiveness on each person's part. Those who put forth um, the strong and dedicated efforts of working through reconciliation and remorse, and confession, and repentance, and then also rebuilding that trust and change. There needs to be a change uh, in our attitude, in our lifestyle, or whatever that may be, but there needs to be change as well as all of these other things. When all of this comes together, and we're able to reach the point of letting go of past hurts. And as I shared before, if we hold on to those hurts, it just really eats away at us and it may not have any effect on the other person. Well, the same is true in, in, the, in relationships and in marriages. So we need to let go of those past hurts. With giving and receiving of forgiveness, relationships of all kind can become stronger than they, they were before. And that's God's grace at work. Once we forgive we don't keep on dredging up the past sins and the past hurt. Even 1 Corinthians 13, which I shared last week in the Love Festival, tells us that love keeps no records of wrongs. Forgiveness is possible even in the most difficult situations and circumstances. Hamilton also mentioned six words that make a relationship last. Those six words are, I am sorry, I forgive you, and then I've added three more words of my own. Please forgive me. These words must be shared in any relationship if it's going to have even a chance to be healthy and even flourish. 
and they need to be shared by all parties involved. It's not just one person or the other. It always takes two um, uh, to have a difference and, and to have where there can be tension and friction. So there also needs to be two in the process of forgiveness. In the Colossians passage that was shared, it describes how Christians are to live in relationships. Apostle Paul says that we are to clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, and that we are to bear with one another and forgive whatever grievances we may have held against one another. And then he says, forgive as the Lord forgave us. To me, that's a powerful statement right there. We are to forgive as the Lord forgives us. I know I'm grateful that God forgives me. Um, He knows that I continue to do things that are hurtful to myself and, and to loved ones and even to our relationship, my relationship with him. So thankfully, he keeps uh, forgiving me, and I'm grateful for that. Now, let's just look a little closer at each of these virtues that Paul mentions, and they, are, again, are for all relationships. The first is compassion. We are to try to understand each other's perspective, to see their side of things. You know, there's a, an old saying that we really maybe can't understand someone's situation or their experience until we've walked a mile in their shoes. Well, the best way to do that is to be in relationship and that we need to be in a, in a deeper than just a surface level relationship, getting to know the person more so than just, hi, how are you doing? So compassion, understanding uh, another person's perspective. The next one is kindness. Do a thoughtful act for another. Again, when I am sharing my my message at a wedding ceremony, I tell the bride and the groom to do something for the other, just unexpectedly. You don't have to, to, to plan a big thing, but maybe just buy one rose instead of a whole uh, arrangement, or fix a meal, or do something that may seem kind of small, but a, a random act of kindness, something that's unexpected. That's, that's a great way to show your kindness uh, to, uh, to another. Humility is the third one. We need to respect all others as equal, and even put their needs above our own. The fourth is meekness. Another word we can think about is gentleness. A gentle word turns away wrath. A a kind word takes away the tension and the friction that may be there, just a calmness that's there. And then fifthly, patience or endurance. We need to be quick to hear, to listen, slow to speak or to act, and slow to anger. Now, being quick to listen. God gave us two ears and slow to speak. He gave us one mouth, so we need to listen, truly listen, and be slow to speak and also slow in our anger. If each of us could live up to these virtues that Paul lists there in Colossians, then we wouldn't have to ask for forgiveness for as often as we maybe need to do. But again, we all do fall short in one or more of these areas from time to time. Forgiveness is a necessity. But also remember, I am sorry. I forgive you. Please forgive me. When we clothe ourselves with these virtues, we do our best to understand the needs of our spouse or our friend and how best to meet those needs in order to bless those that we care about in our personal relationships. God's forgiveness is complete and final. God forgave all of us because of Jesus' sacrifice of willingly dying on the cross. It all comes down to the main point of our Christian walk. Forgive as the Lord forgives us. Amen. This is a time of uh, 
giving our offerings and our tithes unto the Lord. So again, I just encourage you to, to give to the church and help support the church in these uh, times that we all struggle through giving online or um, mailing your, your checks and your offerings into the church address. But also, it's a time for blessings, that we offer up our, our blessings and our thanks to God. And so I'd like to share an Irish blessing that was shared with me this week. And uh, it's, it's a short blessing, but I, I really like it to me. It's a powerful statement. Here's this Irish blessing. May the blessings of this day be the blessings you need most. I love that thought. May the blessings of this day be the blessings you need most. Amen. As we depart from this time of worship, may we know that God is always with us wherever we go. So receive his love, share his love, and be compassionate towards others. We just thank God for all of his blessings that he gives to us every day. Amen and amen.
chance.